On this episode of Project Fox, we're going to be installing this Vibrant Performance air-to-air -air intercooler. We're also going to go over charge pipe fabrication with our aluminum piping. I'm going to give you some tips and tricks to make sure you get nice consistent results every time you use our products. I'm also going to review the proper use of our manual bead roller. Let me quickly point out a few things about this intercooler assembly we're going to be using. The new Vibrant Performance intercoolers feature a bar and plate design, which is a little bit heavier but far more efficient than a standard tube and fin design that you might see in a generic intercooler. An intercooler is basically a heat exchanger. So you have air coming through on the ambient side and you have air going through on the charge side. You want that air to grab as much material passing through the intercooler as possible to draw as much temperature out of the intercooler and into the air as it passes through. So the fin design we utilize on the ambient side is a louvered fin. Now what that does is, is it maximizes the surface area of the fin. So the air passing through that side of the intercooler is gonna draw maximum amount of temperature out of the aluminum. So on the charge side, the air passing through the intercooler, we have an offset fin design. Now the reason we go with an offset fin design on the charge side is because we want to maximize the fin density but we want to minimize the pressure drop as the air passes through the intercooler. So you want that air to pass through efficiently. You don't want it to hang up in the intercooler because if it hangs up in there you're going to get a pressure drop and you're going to lose a little bit of performance. You'll see these features on our full line of intercoolers and intercooler cores which can be utilized with custom fabricated end tanks. Vibrant has proven that these intercoolers can withstand the high horsepower demands of professional drag racers, as well as drift cars in Formula D, which is exactly why EJ's gone with this product to make sure he gets to the ET that he's looking for. Okay, let's get this intercooler mounted up in Project Fox. As a simple best practice, we start off by covering our radiator using the intercooler box that it was shipped in to avoid any damage to the fins scratches or contact with any exposed parts. The intercooler is positioned and we mount the bottom to the frame. Then we mark off where our brackets will be positioned using a permanent marker and use our plasma cutter to cut the holes for the bolts. We used this piece of aluminum and modified it slightly for it to hold up our brackets. We had to cut the hole slightly larger for it to fit. Remember, mock-up is key. Measure everything before making cuts into any metal. Once the bracket was all made up, we used the hardware that was provided in the box to put together the intercooler assembly. Nylock nuts are included, but make sure to tighten all the hardware. Intercoolers are heavy and you don't want these getting loose. The nice thing about these Vibrant Performance intercoolers is that they have four provisions for mounting. So there's a hole in the end tank that goes all the way through. It's part of the casting on both the bottom and the top of the intercooler. Now I've chosen to use all four mounting points on this particular application just because I want to make sure that this intercooler is not going anywhere. So I've got some threaded rod going through the end tank into the frame on the bottom and on the top I've used the uh, bra mounting brackets that come with the intercooler. Now, what, what's also nice uh, with these intercoolers is that these cast end tanks are nice and heavy duty. It's got a, a bottom plate and a top plate that you can weld to if you want to weld a, a little standoff or a bung to thread a bolt into. So you have all kinds of different options available at your disposal when you're installing these. We've got our intercooler mounted up and we've mounted the turbo back onto the crossover pipe. Now we need to run some charge piping to our intercooler and from our intercooler to our throttle body. What we're going to do first is the hot side of the charge piping that runs from the turbo to the intercooler. Now to do that I need a tight bend right off of the turbo and it's going to tuck into the fender here. 
It's going to go down through the fender and then into our intercooler. I'm going to use a 90 degree silicone coupler here. The nice thing about these couplers is they come with a nice long leg on them. So because they come with a long leg, it gives you lots of, lots of options. So you could, you could run the piping short in the leg, you can run it deeper in the leg. Uh, in this particular situation, I need to shorten this leg, so I'm just going to cut part of this leg off and then I'll be able to tuck it into that hole in the fender there. We mock up where the vibrant four-ply coupler is going to be placed and use a marker to indicate where we want to cut it. Then using a utility knife, we cut a straight line across where it was marked. Then we place a loose T-bolt clamp onto the turbo neck and fit the coupler onto the turbo by wiggling it into place. Slide the T-bolt clamp over the silicone and bolt it down. Okay, so I've got my silicone coupler trimmed and it's going into the fender. Now I'm going to mock up the hot side charge piping. Now I'm just going to run a 90 degree aluminum elbow into the coupler and then run it into a piece of straight and then hopefully into another 90 degree elbow down the bottom. Now when I mock this up, I'll mark it with a sharpie, I'll cut it where it needs to be cut. Before I tack anything together, the best practice is to do all your bead rolling before you put it together. That way when you uh, go to bead roll something, it's much easier to bead roll a small piece like this rather than a full assembly that's all welded together. It might run into clearance issues when you do your bead rolling. A bead roll charge pipe ensures that the silicone coupler and T-bolt clamp do not pop off under boost pressure. Before we bead roll, we measure and cut the aluminum pipe to the appropriate length. So there's several different ways you can cut your aluminum charge piping. You can cut it on a saw. Most uh, bends, if you have to make a cut in the middle of a bend, you'll have to cut it with a saw. I prefer to use a pipe cutter because it leaves a nice straight square cut. Let's cut. So I'm just going to make sure that my cut lines up nice and straight and just slowly increase the pressure until it cuts through. Now on this particular pipe cutter, it comes with steel wheels on it and I've taken those out and I've replaced them with Delrin wheels so that it doesn't mark up my aluminum. Presto. So I've made my cut, now it's a good idea to deburr our uh, material after we make our cut. There's a couple of different ways you can deburr aluminum. You can use just a, a half round file or you can use a deburring tool. I prefer a deburring tool, it's just quicker and easier and makes a smoother uh, finish. You don't want any of those burrs getting into your uh, charge piping if it should ever uh, come off. Deburring tools are only used on the inside of the tubing. Nice and smooth, that burr's gone. Now I'm ready to do some bead rolling. With the pipe cut to length and deburred, we get our vibrant performance bead roller out and into the vise. So now we're going to put a little bead on uh, this short piece of pipe. When you use the bead roller, you want to ensure that the pipe always stays seated flat on the fa this face plate here. So you just apply a little pressure. You can take your time, you're not being in a rush to, to, to do this. So you're going to just rotate that. I'm going to try and help it along and rotate it as well on the other side. The dowel on the inside does rotate as well. There's a gear that meshes the larger dowel and the smaller dowel together. So it will rotate it through. Once you get a full revolution, you just tighten it down a little more. Keep in mind that our bead roller is only recommended to be used on aluminum tubing. And we're done. Just loosen it off. And there you have a nice bead. So once the bead roll is complete, we begin fabricating it with the 90 degree piping after taking careful measurement. You may have to do additional cuts, but it's better to do it right the first time. Mock up all your charge piping and make any markings necessary for tubing that needs to be cut. It is also important to remove any burrs on the outside of the tubing to ensure you don't cut the silicone when you assemble it together. 
It's a good idea to only tack weld your assembly together. Don't do any final welding till you get an opportunity to test fit and make sure there's no clearance issues. Okay, let's wrap things up there. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss the next episode where I'll be covering proper use and installation of our Vibrant Performance Vanjin clamping system when I finish up the hot side. As well, I'm going to provide some best practices to help you get those nice consistent uniform beads when you're welding our aluminum tubing. Yes. Let me quickly point out a few things about this intercooler assembly that we're gonna be using. It features awesomeness and sturdiness and aluminous.